Good evening, everybody. All right, hope everybody's having a good evening. First of all, I want to apologize for the people that were given cancellation notices. That was a FUPA coming from uh, um, Infusionsoft. So if you still can't get onto the website, just email Abraham at candlestickforum.com and he'll get you right back on. So just one of those technical fun things that we play with every day. All right, tonight we're going to kind of do a little uh, brief uh, oh, description analysis of some day trade setups as well as uh, money, what do I say, money management of, uh, oh, I better do this. Uh, some of our money management on our uh, uh, how we kind of protect ourselves when a market is doing this, where it was kind of whipsawing and kind of figuring it was going down, but still had stocks that were heading up. How you how you kind of uh, keep your emotions out of your trades and you position yourself so you're hopefully at least making money on both longs and shorts. Uh, with the emphasis toward uh, whatever direction the market is going. So we're going to kind of mix this all in. Uh, now that it is getting colder and we will probably have, uh, we've been gone through a few weeks here, me still recovering from having a stint in me after this uh, dropping uh, the kidney stone or getting it so we're probably going to be almost uh, starting next week. Almost every night, we will be doing uh, uh, doing training sessions in the evening. All right, so let's go through what the markets are doing. Obviously, when we saw this morning star or evening star signal, um, we uh, yeah, I drink a lot of cranberry juice, and right now I'm drinking a lot of lemonade. Um, when we saw this evening star signal, that was a Good indication there might be a reversal in the markets. Obviously, it was. Now we've got a doji day, which makes it very simple. If they open up positive tomorrow, they're going to pop it up. I would imagine they're going to pop it up at least to the 50-day moving average, which had been acting as support prior to this. Uh, but as long as we can't get above the T-line, we're in a downtrend. On the other hand, if we wake up tomorrow and the pre-market futures are down, we're in for a doji sandwich which if this day right here and this day right here are the same, that means they can take it all the way down to the 200-day moving average. Um, yeah, we started a couple of minutes late. Sorry about that, Jim. Uh, if you're hearing an echo, you might be logged in twice. Do a, OK, level two is just more showing what the bids and asks are. Yep, we can do do that one night also. So anyways, right now the Dow did a doji. The S&P also did a doji. The NASDAQ did a doji. So it's going to be very important to see how they open this market tomorrow. If they open it lower, we're still probably having down to the 200-day moving average. Now, more important or more... Uh, uh, obvious on the uh, NASDAQ, notice the big dumpling top. Now, a dumpling top is the opposite of a big fry pan bottom, which we are expecting a breakout to the upside on a fry pan bottom. We're expecting a big crash down, not a crash down, but a lot of force to the downside, um, which means if they open this lower, even in the NASDAQ has a possibility of going down to its 200-day moving average. The only one that really showed any non-indecisive trading was the uh, transportation index. But we still need to notice where the stochastics are. They aren't quite in the oversold area on any of the indexes, which means there's still a good possibility that they can take it down a little bit further. OK, some of the, uh, whoops, that's not going to work. Crude oil prices 
are still having a hard time getting out of their own way. As we can see, we're still in this steady downtrend. And notice how the 50 acted as resistance. Even though it was an up day today, it wasn't a reversal signal of any sort. Um, still expect crude oil prices to head down further. Uh, interest rates. Down near the lower end of the channel. Still not moving significantly enough. And this is bond prices. So if bond prices keep bobbing in between here, that means interest rates aren't going anywhere. Gold prices showed a wee little bit of strength, but didn't change the downtrend. They're still trading gold below the T-line. Still in a downtrend. Same scenario on silver. Silver, steady downtrend. The dollar uh, has, was waffling today. Not that it had changed direction, but right, well, it had come back. And notice where it bottomed, right smack dab on the uh, T line. So as long as they can't close the dollar below the T line, you're still in an uptrend, which obviously means the euro is still in a downtrend. Uh, until it gets above the T-line. Let's see, the British pound. There's a bearish J-hook pattern still on its way down. Yeah, the uh, T-line is the 8 exponential moving average. Very effective as far as using candlestick signals. And just one very simple rule. If you... Uh, uh, See a candlestick buy signal and a close up above the T line. The uh, uptrend is in progress until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Uh, we can I get the Japanese yen here? Japanese yen did a little pop up today. There's your left right combo, very strong bullish reversal, then a gap up through the T line. Japanese yen should be in a little uptrend at this point. The T line is the 8 exponential moving average. That's this black line. Again, very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal or close above the T line, you can stay long as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Uh, right now, I'm uh, buying uh, cattle. Notice the J hook type pattern, and we're staying above the T line. Not only the T line, but we're staying up above the 3 T line. And see how effective the 3 T line is, even if you move away from the T line. You can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the 3T. That means you're moving back to the T line. So for those uh, that are day trading, if you use a combination of your T line and your 3T line, you can get in and out of trades very, very effectively. Can you use the T line on any and all time frames? Yes. Everything that you see on this chart right here is what you call fractal. This chart right now is the daily chart. I could flip it over here to the 10-minute chart, and everything stays exactly the same. The 3T line is the 3 exponential moving average. Yeah, okay, all right, what else do I need to look at? Oop, I need to get back here. All right, been trading some cotton. Cotton, I'm still short. Covered it uh, yesterday, but reshorted it today because notice what it did at the T line. It failed. So if they start trading lower, we're a wave one, wave two, bearish J hook pattern, wave three. The black line is your or the T line, the eight exponential moving average. The gray line is your 20 day simple moving average. Your blue line is the 50 day simple moving average. And Whenever we see a big red line, that's your 200-day moving average. The reason those we have those on the charts is that every major money manager around the world uses those simple moving averages. And the advantage we have with candlesticks is we can see exactly what they're doing once they hit those re uh, uh, hit those uh, moving averages. Yeah, they're the 50, the 200, and the 20 are all simple. That's a, what the uh, uh, the major money managers use. Uh, let's see, what else did we did go? We did silver, dollar, soybeans.
what Singapore fuel soybeans is trying to bottom not quite there yet but we've had a bullish engulfing signal starting to see some buying and let's see what wheat is doing wheat also trying to bottom notice how flat it's traded with indecisive trading at this point I'm gonna put a buy stop above today's high right now it's trading after hours it comes up through there that tells us this uh, flat trading area is now reversed uh, reverse the uh, uh, downtrend okay now in markets like this there are still stocks that are acting strong and this is the advantage we have with candlesticks and basically the strong charts are coming out of patterns Let me make this a little bit smaller essentially to make this even smaller yet notice the big fry pan bottom on VMIC and then the breakout well if we were catching this the first time notice where the breakout occurred the gap up right through the beginning of the uh, pattern what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom a very strong price move now what usually happens after this is what we call the classic a fry pan bottom strong price move a J hook pattern notice what ha how the J hook pattern had a little kind of scoop pattern morning star signal and notice what it's done over the last couple of days when the market was just getting obliterated it was still holding on to that pattern so the reason that we go after the patterns is uh, 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 because they have already got the investor sentiment built into them. That's why they're that's why they're recognizable patterns. And as you can see in a pattern, they have the pattern is based upon something. Let's see, integral to that stock price. As you can see, the markets were off hellaciously over the last week. Yet this stock is still moving up. So this puts us in a situation where our portfolio will still have long positions in it while the, uh, uh, while the market is moving down because the pattern is there. This one was kind of a breakout pattern going into wave three. And notice what it couldn't do. Even yesterday with the big down day, they bounced it right off the T-line and took it back up. Now, for those of you that are day traders, I uh, bear we're going to have some day trader stuff in here because I made a mistake and I had promised the uh, chat room today that I would talk about kind of money management. So we are going to do one uh, specifically on day trading. There's going to be a lot of day trading stuff here, setups in here, but we're going to do one that's solidly day trading probably within the next 10 trading days and that will still be open to everybody. Uh, Pablo, we will get to all of them, uh, and those are uh, we'll we'll get to some of those as we go along. Um, so we've got stocks that, even though the market was heading down, we were still long these positions. Why? Because the signals and the patterns told us that we should still stay in them. And notice what this one has been doing; hasn't been able to get back to the T line, and they can't even hardly open it below the T line or the three T line. So as long as you stay above the 3T line, obviously you're going to be above the T line. You just hold those positions until you see a sell signal. And when it gets further away from the T line, like over here, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test the T line. Now, let me see if I can get rid of that little thing. All right, I think I did it. Now I can't get that thing off the screen. That's just a fine howdy do. Okay, so, um, and here's another one that uh, uh, we closed out the position because it closed below the T-line a few days ago, and now we've bought back the position because notice what the pattern is doing. It's staying above the T-line, and it's still in this uptrend, and today they took it right back down, almost right exactly to the T-line. Now, when I point out that they've taken it exactly to the T-line, you got to remember, most of these moving averages act like magnets because everybody is watching to see what the major moving averages are doing. Nobody has the 8 exponential on their chart. So 
when the uh, prices move back to the T line, it's not moving back to a target that everybody is looking at. So the T line, because nobody uses it, is acts kind of like its own oh, Fibonacci number. It's like a human nature uh, uh, calculation, or just like John Bollinger's Bollinger bands that measures the uh, trends when they get ex um, ex exceed one direction or the other. Um, my late friend Dave Elliott's uh, MOBO bands were all showing what the trend was doing. The T line, uh, I've used every indicator for the last 40 years. The T line is about the most effective indicator. It's probably a combination of the uh, some, I don't want to say derivative of the Bollinger bands, MOBO bands, everything else that everybody else is using. Just a very high probability. And I tell people, don't take my word for it. Check the simple rules of a uh, T line. If it see a candlestick buy signal or close above the T line, you stay long. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test it. So if you see a candlestick sell signal way above the T line, start taking profits because the probability is they're going to come back and test the T line. Are there folks who do use the ADMA? Frank, if they do, it's still just uh, uh, probably such a minute uh, percentage of all investors out there that it, it, it wouldn't even be effective. Now, I know some commodity traders use the 10 simple moving average, um, and the 8 exponential is probably not too far away from it. But as far as stock investors, very few people that I know of uh, uh, use it. Yes, and uh, they're starting to use it quite a bit in the Forex trading. Um, Yes, John. John, uh, when John and I shared a uh, session, he discovered the eight exponentials. So, and I got the eight exponential from one of my students, uh, who's now set up his own website, uh, Rick Sadler, who has hit or miss candlesticks. He does a different style of trading. He he does scalping using uh, the uh, quick patterns. And uh, Rick came down from Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, oh, I can't imagine how many years ago. Sat in front of the screens. We did a private training session for two two solid days. He went back up and he kept complaining, "I'm just not getting. It. I'm just not getting it." And then he emailed one time and said, "Take a look at the eight exponential moving average," and came up with a formula that if you saw a candlestick buy signal. So the nice thing about candlesticks is that if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. The fact that they do work uh, makes it so you don't have to keep trying new things. What you can do is use the candlesticks as your your building blocks or your basis, and you can add things to your chart. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, take it back off. So I was making pretty good money without the T line, and once I put the T line on my charts, my income has grown dramatically better or my correct trade ratio has grown dramatically better. It keeps you in trades that you might uh, come out of because you see a sell signal. You don't know whether it's reversing. So if I see a sell signal and it doesn't close below the T line, I just give it time to close below the T line. Or I continue to hold. Here's another good looking chart. Uh, C-O-N-N, kind of bottom in, did the double doji. Uh, has a big gap here area here. First target should be up here at the 50-day uh, moving average, and uh, we're st I'm still working on the candlestick observations. Notice the scoop pattern on RYAM had a nice bullish engulfing signal, your Doji sandwich, and a failure at the 50. But this becomes a, first of all, we've got the scoop pattern, which implies there's going to be a good slingshot effect out to the upside. This is what I call the bobble, which is a, comes up, hits the uh, resistance level, pulls back to the T line. If they can't close this below the T line, the T line will keep pushing this right back up, doing a J-hook type pattern, that as long as it doesn't close below the T line, you stay with it, because this is a failure at the 50. Then there's profit taking, and then when the profit taking is over, it takes it back up through the bobble. That's going to be the new one. Yep, I couldn't think of any other uh, other name for it. Um, it's not going to be a blue ice failure because notice where your stochastics are; they're only halfway up. 
This one to me is going to do indecisive trading and then come back up. All right, and so again, this is all kind of illustrating. There are still long positions going on right now, even in this down market. So any right now, my uh, portfolio is probably 50% long and 50% short. Now that seems kind of goofy when we know the market is heading down as strong as it is. Except we've still got too many charts that are acting strong. The nice thing about the scanning techniques for candlesticks is we can very quickly, within 10 minutes of each day, find the charts that uh, are still acting strong that we can stay long and or find the charts that are acting very weak that we can be short. So there are 7,800 trading entities out there. In less than 10 minutes each day, we can find the charts that are still uh, showing where the bulls are stepping in despite the direction of the market. Um, so here's another J-hook pattern on PTCT. This one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Uh, here's a few more. This one is probably going to be on our recommended list tomorrow. Look at fold. Notice what it did right here, smack dab on the 50-day moving average. So this is all part of our what we call our convergence uh, analysis, which is as many things as we can put into our analysis that implies that there's been a reversal, uh, the more the better. Notice we have a morning star signal, and the morning star signal had a long candle that closed up above the T-line, number one. Number two, look at where the bottom of the doji hit, right off the 50-day moving average. That told us they weren't selling through the 50. They were starting to buy here. Three, we can see they broke this downtrending channel. And four, our stochastics are in the oversold area turning up. There's very few reasons not to be buying this stock, if any. The only reason I wouldn't buy the stock tomorrow if it opened down here and traded down. If this opens positive, and that will also be a function of which way the market opens tomorrow, you want to be buying this immediately because that would be breaking this downward trend channel with all those elements of why to be buying. This is part of, uh, if I was even day trading this one, I would be buying it immediately on a positive open because if it starts trading positive and breaking this level, that's when everybody starts jumping in. And that's not part of my day trading uh, things right now. Here's another one. Notice what it's pulling. This is OVTI, Doji, right smack dab. I thought I got rid of that little thing. Let's go ahead trying to get rid of that display cursor value da, da, da. yeah oh no, I'll just try to keep it up. but if this does a positive open a doji right here at the 50 and closes back up above the T line buying that one also ACHN kind of the same scenario a left-right combo right here on the 50. If they start trading this up, especially breaking through this downtrending channel, I'll be buying this one on positive trading. Might not buy a full position. Might buy a half a position here, and as soon as it breaks through the uh, T-line, buy the other half. Because notice what type of pattern we're coming out of. There's that fry pan bottom, wave one, wave two, right back to the 50-day moving average. A strong bullish signal, your left-right combo, that was a kind of a doji hammer, bullish engulfing right at the 50. That tells us exactly what they're doing when it got back to the 50. Where would you put your stop on fold? If it opened positive tomorrow, whoops, Japanese rice traders have a very simple rule. If this is the candle that told us the bulls are taking control, they shouldn't close it more than halfway down this candle. If they did, if they close it more than halfway down, you want to be out, number one. And number two, if they did close it more than halfway down, they'd be closing it below the uh, T-line. You'd be want, want to be right back out of that trade. Now notice over here, they started doing some buy signals. But number one, we weren't quite in the oversold area. And two, they could never get it to close back up above the T-line. This is a completely different story. Now there's been a change of investor sentiment. Oh, okay, yeah, so we answered that, All right? Uh, same scenario on RDNT. Doji, doji, and where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. 
the cassocks in the oversold area and they gapped it down right to the teen line or to the 50 a doji doji now what's this tell us it tells us uh, when they gap it down in the over for buy signals there's your buy signal another one that if it opens positive tomorrow you want to be buying immediately because the pro prospects after this strong signal is they open it positive and confirm breaking this down trending channel they're going to take it up uh, a decent percentage trade that day do you wait to the end of the day if it hits the middle of the previous candle or do you get out uh, no you wait to the end of the day because notice the type of move that we saw today in fold it was a pretty significant move it wouldn't be unusual for him to bring it back right to the T line and then start taking it back up so if you're an aggressive trader if you see that, if they open a positive and start backing it off and come right here to your uh, T line, then you flip to your 10 minute chart and see what your 10 minute chart is doing. If it's starting to move back up, which would be co uh, coordinated with bouncing off the T line, you want to be buying because that means they've consolidated and now they're going to take it back up again. Um, all right, Long, is, this is being recorded so you can look at it later. Opens higher than last day's close. Uh, just opens, uh, yeah, just opens positive. Uh, what you don't want to see is opening down here. That tells you the bulls aren't there. Now, if it opened down here and then came back up through the previous day's close, then you want to be buying. That tells you the bulls are still there. Uh, Bill, I always uh, buy the market open. Pre-market doesn't... Uh, uh, mean anything uh, it's where the where everybody's making that final decision on the open so if it opens positive I want to be trading immediately and my immediately might be two minutes five minutes seven minutes something that tells me what I don't want to see is I'm opening it and then it starts backing off that means I'm, the bulls aren't there yet but if it opens positive and starts backing off very simple. I put my buy stop at the open because if it backs off and then comes back up through the open, the little profit taking on the open is over. Let's see. And Dugley. Dugley had an opportunity to, to go positive. It didn't. So what's the obvious here? The obvious is they're bringing it back down to the 50. And once it gets there, then you watch to see if they start popping it back up from that level. Okay, uh, we've got a few that we're going to get to. Uh, but here's some more that will look good on the positive side. True, notice what happened on TRUE. Just a lot of indecision. Anytime you see this much indecision, and notice where that indecision was occurring, right on the 50-day moving average. Now we've had the doji bullish confirmation. So essentially, what do we have? Your fry pan bottom, your pullback. Now look for the next wave. If wave one was from 14 to 24, look for this to move back up into the 29 area. What time frame for chart tracking the tape? Whatever time frame you're, you're trading. If you're a quick trader, you might use a one minute, five minute, 10 minute combination. If you're a slower trader, you might use a five minute, 15 minute, hour combination. If you're a swing trader, uh, I'm usually using the daily with the 10-minute uh, uh, chart showing me what to do uh, um, over a two or three day period. If you see a steady eddy, which has been above the three, time, three, line, T, bloop, three T and eight T for a week or two, would you still be a buyer? Depending on where it was, um, you can you just the further up that trend, the obviously the more nimble you have to be for uh, getting back out of that position if it if, if it does a sell signal. Let's see. All right, A R I A. Here's part of a day trade setup. Notice that they were heading down, then they gapped it up and did a doji. Notice where the doji occurred right smack dab on the 50. Now we have a very simple rule of the doji and the doji rule is it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So we know what type of setup this is 
doing. If it opens positive, that means it's going to trade positive after the doji, which means if it starts trading positive, we've got a flutter kicker in progress. And that means everybody that's watching to see if it's going to break through the 50, if it opens positive, we're buying very early because we know the probability is it's going to go positive. And it's a flutter kicker in the sense that notice we had a down day, then they gapped it up above the open of that day. So they gapped it up. And now if they open up positive and go positive, a flutter kicker is if you took that doji out of there, you basically had a kicker signal, which is your strongest uh, uh, reversal signal. Um, what scan do you use? Are you the T-line? Uh, the T-line is just on all the charts. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, the uh, one minute. Now, yeah, that's all part of our entry and exit uh, process. We can, we can do a demonstration on that. But if I'm looking at buying something, uh, that's a whole different topic. But I use a combination of the, I, I'm looking at the 10-minute chart. If the 10-minute chart is setting up, I flip down to my five-minute chart to see if that five-minute chart is confirming what the 10-minute chart looks like it's going to do. And then if that chart looks good and I'm ready to buy, I'll flip down to the one-minute chart to make sure the one-minute chart isn't up in the overbought area and going to be ready to pull back, which means my five-minute chart would kind of fizzle a little bit and the 10-minute chart would fizzle a little bit. Um, so we will do, I mean, we'll do a, a session on using the entry and exit strategies, using the one-minute, five-minute, ten-minute chart, and using the uh, T-line and the 3T-line to, to coordinate getting in the exact time. And that's not a hard process, even though that's a lot of factors. It's all visual. You'll just glance at it real quick and be able to see what's happening. So ARIA, look for a positive open tomorrow. You want to be buying immediately. Uh, let's see. And VOLC, there's your big bullish engulfing signal after this long, steady, eddy downtrend. That tells me the first pop is probably going to be back up here to the 200-day moving, I'm sorry, the 50-day moving average. If it breaks through there, then you've got this gap area to come up and fill. So that's, that's got some good prospects on a positive open tomorrow. Land's end, there's your left-right combo, morning star, close of very high probability that if they open this positive, wave one, wave two, wave three is going to be in progress. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to save those. I'm just going to do a few more. Now, again, the re reason I'm showing longs right now is because uh, this market getting toward the oversold, even though it may not be heading down, we're still uh, uh, we're still seeing some very good, strong, bullish charts. FMCM, FXCM, obvious uh, J-hook pattern in, the prog in progress with the bullish engulfing signal. Uh, how do you scan, uh, Gary? Very simple scans, depending on what software you're using. We use uh, Metastock. Uh, uh, we've got uh, scans going uh, to think or swim. Um, Oh, uh, TC Net, and the nice thing about our chat room is we've got about 220 people in there every day, and we've got people that come up with very good uh, uh, setups as far as uh, trades because they've been doing it long enough. They're using all the techniques that we've been kind of illustrating for for years now, and we've got people like Ed C who does great as far as writing the formulas for all the uh, uh, all the patterns and the signals, and uh, so no, there's no no idiots in there. Uh, yep. So room is uh, everybody's kind of trying to help each other. It's not like uh, uh, there's any competition. Everybody's trying to to help each other along because my whole uh, I guess modus operandi is the more people that know what to be looking for, the easier it is to come on a daily basis to go to the chat room and find very good trade setups because everybody's looking for the same thing.
Okay, a few more on the long side, and then we'll go to the short side, and then we'll get to the day trade setups. Rally has uh, got a nice uh, chart set up. Notice when it did its gap up, they haven't been able to close it below the T line. Still looking for the target up here at the uh, the 200-day moving average. Uh, got a few fry pan bottoms. There's that slow curve on RP. This one can be bought on positive trading. Now that it's broken through the uh, 50, next target should be the 200-day moving average. That's right. But they're all good jokes. It's um, what do we got here? Oh, E I G I. Uh, another one coming out of the fry pan bottom. This is what the result is uh, coming out of a fry pan bottom. Is a steady, strong uptrend, and there's only one parameter that keeps you in this trend. Even though we've seen sell signals, it couldn't close below the T-line. That meant the uptrend was still uh, still in progress. Uh, yeah, let's see. All right, now, let's, uh, this is what I was trying to get to, is... Even though the market has been going up, there's been or down, there's been good longs, but there's also been oh, what happened here. Very simple, uh, or I'm going to say, very clear illustrations of when it's time to sell. Notice the sell signals over here. It's not uncommon for the rally to try to continue up, but if it fails a second time, that means everybody starts bailing. And here's also that very simple rule. You see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. You stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. We're also looking for the bearish patterns that uh, we can see opposite that slow curve to the downside. We were short uh, Cree over the last few days because they couldn't get back up above the T-line. Notice a little evening star signal. Let me make this bigger. So the evening type signal telling us they weren't going up above the T-line, the slow curve, and then bam, they took it down hard. That took the, uh, uh, even if, uh, for our option trading, a lot of our options, I think I paid, I can't remember, on the uh, 40s puts, I was, I think I paid like a dollar, dollar ten, dollar twenty, and closed them out this morning for five dollars and ninety cents. So again, not that uh, there's anything that's magical about this. It's just that the investor sentiment works in the same patterns over and over. So that one made good money. We're still short SEAS because again, there's the opposite of your fry pan bottom, which is your dumpling top. So this becomes a very excellent day trade. Number one, if they open this lower, again, they rule the doji, they're going to move it down. Number two, we know it's going to move the same magnitude as that bigger. Number three, we know that's the start of a breakdown after a dumpling top, that the prospects of not only being in the right direction at the right time, but with a good, good strong move to the downside is extremely, uh, extremely good. So, okay, Diego, I'm going to kind of show you some things that have good setups. Whoops, that wasn't it. So, again, this one, here's another uh, prospect. Notice how, notice the direction. We're in a downtrend. It bounced today, but stochastics are still heading down. Makes this very simple. If they open this lower tomorrow, I told you the buying that came in this afternoon was just kind of a bounce, but they'll still be taking this down. And where's the first target? They can probably take it right back down to test the, the low of yesterday. Makes for a very high probability uh, trade in the right direction at the right time. Now, Tesla also has a very good bullish trade because we've had a hammer gap up through the T-line and a doji, which means if they open this positive, 
they're at least going to take it up to the uh, 50 to test that. So if you get in early, you've got a quick uh, pop to the upside, whether you're trading uh, both either the stock and or the options. And we did that today. We'd already recommended RPRX. Whoops. Do this correctly. RPRX had a doji gap up. That's your best friend. That usually tells you you're going to be followed by a very strong uptrend. Today, or yesterday, we had a bullish engulfing signal on a day where the market just got obliterated, and it closed right here at the T-line. So we have a bullish engulfing signal after a strong bullish signal closing right on the T-line made it very simple. If it opened positive, you wanted to be buying immediately because you're probably going to get a good quick trade out of this uh, just based upon everything setting up correctly. Uh, so right now, that same scenario is happening with DORM where it closed right here at the T-line, open positive, had a good strong price move. So the nice thing again about the uh, graphics, graphic illustrations of candlesticks is it basically tells you when something is closed right at a resistance level, especially after a big bullish day like a long-legged doji after an inverted hammer closing right at the T-line. If it opens positive, there's a good prospect. They'll take it right up here to the... Uh, 50-day moving average very quickly. Um, okay. <laughs> and let's see. These are all things that if I was day trading on a regular basis, I'd be looking for these setups. Anything that tells me that they're at a resistance level, and if it opens positive, it's confirming a pattern or a signal. This is kind of our little cup and handle. And notice what this pattern is right here. There's your morning star signal, which is usually an indication there's going to be a slingshot effect to the upside. Uh, Greg, I don't have Forex pairs on this system, but candlesticks work just as effectively. Candlesticks are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. doesn't matter whether it's Forex, stocks, bonds, uh, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed, which is anything that people are investing in, candlesticks are the, the measurement of investor sentiment for all of that. Uh, G-Pro, we've made very good money with this one. It's pulled back, but notice the pattern. Fry pan bottom breakout, J-hook. Notice on the J-hook what our signals were telling us. Very indecisive. Dojis started back up for the next move. Had a wave one, wave two, wave three. Wave three, approximately the same as wave one. Now we have, and notice that after it pulled back, what it didn't do. It didn't close below the T-line, which makes this very easy. If this opens positive tomorrow or starts trading back up above today's open, that tells you this J-hook pattern is in progress. You're probably going to get some good price moves. Very simple rule of thumb. When a stock hits six or fifth or not about hits ninety, it's going to go to a hundred because the hundred is a nice round number. Uh, and AMBA somewhat the same thing because AMBA is a supplier of uh, uh, G Pro fry pan bottom J hook pattern. How did the J hook pattern start with a big huge bullish engulfing signal? Notice the pullback here. Notice the sell signal, which is kind of a trick illustration because there is no sell signal here. This is just a pullback and notice what it couldn't do. It couldn't close below the T-line. Another one that if it opens positive tomorrow, look for more upside. Um, uh, not looking too much at stochastic on the bottom. No, right now when you're in a trend, your stochastics can stay overbought for months. What we're looking for is a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Uh, Edith, the T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Okay. Uh, let's see. Repo, TDD. 
DDD, another nice setup. Notice the uh, rounding top. Notice what it did when it got to the 50. There's your left-right bearish combo. There's your doji com, uh, confirmed to the downside. And now you have kind of a spinning top. Makes it move this in the direction of how they open it tomorrow. So if they open this lower, expect at least a magnitude move of that day, two points to the downside. Um, how to handle the T-line crunch. DJ, that's a whole, whole another, well, I'll see if I can find a T-line crunch. Uh, why did you add the three EMA to your setup? More for day trading. Uh, the further away you move from the T-line, the more effective the three T-line becomes. Um, again, the simple rule of uh, the T-line is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to move back, but when? So as long as you're above the three T line, it means you're still in a very strong uptrend. And let's see. Oh, we did seize. Seize is another one that is setting up. You've got this dumpling top. Let me make this a little bit more pronounced. With a doji, if this opens lower and starts trading lower, look for that same magnitude day and possibly a breakdown because Again, like the fry pan bottom, what happens coming out of a dumpling top, that's where they start really forcing it to the downside. And Whoops, I'm on the wrong. Did we do all those? No, I didn't. I think that's out of kilter here. Uh, these are the type of things we look for on the short side. This is... This is a very high probability trade. When you see that slow curve where they can't get it above the T-line and they gap it down, that's where you can see it. A lot of people say, well, shoot, I don't want to buy a stock. I want to wait for the stock to pull up a little bit, and then I'll short it. That's the exact wrong way to invest. Because if they open this lower, after gapping it down, which way should they be going? They should be going hard this way. If they're able to bring it back up, that tells you the selling isn't all that great. Uh, you don't want to be shorting at that time. So, once again, the simple logic that is built into candlesticks is just pure common sense. And it's stuff that most people say, yeah, I knew that. At least now they've got a graphic uh, way to, to understand what they were supposed to know. Don't gaps usually get filled first? No, not first. They eventually get filled, but they may not get filled. There's a gap right here. I don't care about that gap because I want to take care of this trend. Now they're heading down. Where are they likely to come to? Probably down here back to fill this gap. So just because there's a gap, that doesn't mean this trend is going to be affected by that gap. This trend is usually going to be indicating that if they've gapped up, especially after a little inverted hammer through the T-line, you're in an uptrend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. If they're heading down, where are they heading to? Probably back to fill a gap someplace. So you can use those as targets. VHC. Big down day or big down move. Fail of the T-line, slow curve. You can be shorting this if you can still short it since it's just above 5 bucks. But the next move would be a uh, bearish J-hook pattern to the downside. And P10, these are all shorts that uh, we're looking at for high trade situations. Notice how this broke this little downtrending channel, and notice which way this trend is going. And now they've had a big move to the downside, stochastic's heading down. That tells me there's probably still a lot more downside to this one. BMA, there's that slow curve. Notice a little evening star signal. Where do you think this one's going to? Right down here to the 200-day uh, moving average. So if you're shorting the stock and or buying the puts, at least you know where, where your potential target is based upon this whole failure coming back below the T-line. The and uh, SFY. There's a, a, a situation again that if they open this lower, that means this little pop-up was just profit-taking on the short side. 
if they open it lower, they're still taking it down. And SBGI, another slow curve rollover that uh, if this opens lower, you probably want to be shorting it. So let's see. I think that is about it. Uh, sale. We've been short sale, and this is just a slow, steady downtrend. We just have our stop at the uh, T line. It shouldn't pop up through that level. So, anyways, uh, right now with this market again giving us the doji, the very simple rule of the doji, this market's going to move in the direction how they open tomorrow. If they open it lower, expect. Remember, where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. If they open this lower, I wouldn't be surprised if they couldn't take it all the way down to the 200-day moving average. Now, why is the 200-day moving average going to be a uh, viable support? Because I goofed up here. Because look what's happened on the Dow over the last few months. Every time it's hit the 200-day moving average, it's popped back up. So I wouldn't, wouldn't uh, doubt that it couldn't come back down there and test it again. Okay, so with that, now I can take general questions on candlesticks, not individual stocks just yet. And before you go, there is a high dollar special. Uh, we're, no, it's not a high dollar special. A lot of people keep asking, is there a test uh, uh, a test we could do of your uh, chat room? The nice thing about our chat room is we've got, as I say, about 220 people in there, everybody trying to help each other out. So here is a special. If you want to try the chat room for a week without having to shell out anything, Click on that uh, uh, that link, and uh, that will give you some options of which week you you could come in and just test the uh, test the room. Again, our room isn't uh, anything more than everybody throwing ideas back and forth, or if people have questions, I usually come in uh, usually midday for about an hour. I'll put out comments at the open, and then I'll come in near the close and try to give some more comments. Lots of free jokes, and they're good jokes. It's some of the best you've ever heard. Um, how do you trade stocks that are below all the EMAs? By, I'm not buying the EMAs or are the uh, moving averages. I'm buying the price. So if I see a stock that's trading well below the uh, moving averages and it does a buy signal, then the logic is they're going to come popping back up to the uh, moving averages. Um, geez, you know, AK, you're cutting me to the quick here. Um, my stochastic settings are 12.33. Nothing set in stone. They just seem to work effectively, or I've, I tweaked them over the years, and it doesn't take much to tweak them. All you have to do is go back and say, all right, where's my stochastics at the bottom, and where are my stochastics at the top? And 12.33 worked out pretty well for, I'm mostly a swing trader. Um, so any consideration of direction of higher moving averages before you enter? Uh, depending on where you are as far as the, uh, the stock price and how much room you have in your stochastics. Now, if I see something bounce off of here with stochastics in the oversold area, at least I know that uh, these moving averages or the uh, 50 is probably my next target. If I bounce from here, I know that uh, the 50 is probably not going to be a resistance level. It might stop there for a little bit, but your stochastics have a lot of power in them yet to take the price up through that level. Uh, J hook, yeah, is an ABC or one, two, three, whatever you want to call it. I, um, it's just a three wave pattern. Yeah, no symbols yet. As soon as I tell Jim to do the double line, then you can type in your symbols. Try to keep it to two per person. 
so we can get through. All right, so anyways, there is a, for those that, that have, uh, would like to see candlestick candlesticks, a lot of people say, oh, I, there's too many signals to learn and they don't always work. I can pretty much guarantee that uh, after 40 years of uh, investing, that candlesticks are tell you tell you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. You don't have to listen to all the rhetoric of uh, Kramer and uh, everybody else out there that's given ideas. You can see exactly what that chart uh, price is going to do. Do you have any day trading webinars on your tube? I think not on uh, YouTube. They're on probably on the on the site, uh, Vic. Um, uh, we have two uh, two trading rooms. One is the uh, regular trading room, and one is the uh, option trading room. Um, so you're going to get a lot of day trade ideas uh, in the regular room. And the reason we moved people over to the option trading room is because we didn't want to be tra talking option strategies, uh, cluttering up the uh, regular room. That you can talk more option strategies based upon the signals or patterns. Um, so, uh, so we have a separate uh, options trading room. And uh, several times you've pointed out bullish signals such as warning stars and bullish engulfing signals, but these not have been at the end of a downtrend. They have been in a flat or non-trending areas. They do not meet the definition of reversal trading system, which gives in the book. Why do you still refer them to bullish signals even in these flat areas? Uh, a morning star signal at the end of a flat area is like a mini scoop pattern. You got to factor that for some reason they were selling it off. There was a day of indecision and bringing it right back up. That morning star signal, even if it's at the end of a flat, it acts again like a slingshot effect. Uh, when you when will these receive cancellation, be able to log in. If you can't log in, just email Abraham at candlestickforum.com. Say, hey, if I can't get on, please put me back in. It was some glitch in InfoSoft or Infusionsoft. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know what the tryout is for the options room. Marie, also email Abraham tomorrow with that same question. Are there a minimum requirements? I use my minimum requirement, James, is that I want to see at least 200,000 shares traded each day, if not more. Um, now, that's not so critical if you're trading a $50 stock, because you're probably not going to go in unless you're a big money person with 3,000 shares. Um, so, uh, uh, but I usually use a... My minimum is uh, if it's a five dollar stock, it should be trading more than two hundred thousand shares a day. If it's a dollar stock, which I don't trade that much, it better trade about a million shares a day so you can get in and out of it. Let's see. Uh, Mike, I sleep well all the time myself. Is the regular room future or stock? Or is only stock. Uh, it's mostly stock, Mary. But I will put. Uh, I usually tell people what I'm doing as far as trading uh, soybeans or the dollar or things like that. How many people are in each room? Uh, there's about 220 to 240 in the uh, main room, and there's about 30 in the options trading room. Will the one week allow entry for the options chat room? I, no, T. O. I think that's just for the main chat room, just so people can see whether op or candlesticks really work or not. Uh, are candlesticks a good predictor of earnings release direction? Uh, again, Tony, if you go back to the very simple or definition of candlesticks, it is the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, and if they're buying knowing that there's an earnings report coming out this evening or tomorrow, that means probably the people that know a lot more than we do about that particular stock, if they're still buying, I have discovered that for every time I've gotten hit with a negative surprise at earnings because of the candlestick signals, I've gotten hit with four to five times that amount with the positive side because of the candlestick signals.
Uh, Mike, I would read high profit candlestick patterns. That's got all the meat in it. Uh, and that's probably a question you want to ask everybody in here, which ones they would like the best. How do you scan for the next day's setups in 10 minutes starts? That's all it's very simple scanning. We do, we do a session on how to scan. Once you've got your formulas set up, it's just a process of going through and visually seeing which ones uh, are confirming or showing which scan or blah, blah, blah. The scans will show you which ones look like the best setups for the next day. How do you, can you show how to do day trading? Oh, KH, day trading, that's what we were trying to do is show you the illustrations of which ones are likely to move big the next day. So you can get in early, and if you want to get out by the end of the day, you can be out by the end of the day. All right. How do we get access to trade setup rules? Uh, Ron, that's just kind of going through. First of all, those rules are in the books. And then I'm sure a lot of members must get tired of my repeating, but there's very simple rules to all this. Candlestick signals work. We just have to learn how to use them effectively, and that's just a repetition of making sure you're looking at everything in the right uh, right manner. It, candlestick signals, if you have problems, which I say you, I, I was the worst investor in the world. I was a stockbroker for eight years, and I, I couldn't hit my butt with either hand. And so I got out of the business because I realized the brokerage firms didn't have any idea what made stocks go up or down. They Everybody always had their project, projections, and... You had these MBAs working, telling you which stocks have good earnings, increases, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't make stock prices move. Candlestick signals are, prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And the candlesticks are the, uh, the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. Um, Okay, how do you combine T-line and 3T-line for day trading? Uh, you Again, when the 3T-line, uh, the, t the price starts moving up well past the T-line and starts moving up past the 3T-line, start using the 3T-line to start uh, looking for a sell signal. Where is the link to the chat room? Well, right now you're in the chat room. It's just a different uh, password for members during the day. The significance of a doji sandwich is, let's say this opened lower and traded the high probability that it was going to do a doji sandwich, which meant if this was candle one and that was the doji and it opened lower, the high probability of this candle would be the same magnitude as this candle, the doji in the middle or the doji sandwich. You wait to the end of the day to determine a sell of a, a 8 EMA. What if it doesn't bounce and what if? it doesn't bounce and keeps dropping. You still wait to the end of the day? Yes, I usually wait to the end of the day. A perfect illustration of that was, oh, I had a lot of people saying, oh, man, do we need to get out of this trade? They're just killing it. And the answer was, ask me again at the end of the day. The end of the day, it closed above the T-line. Somewhat the same uh, illustration for AMBA that during the day if you closed it out, because it traded all the way down here, big dark candle. But at the end of the day, remember, if you're buying based upon a candlestick daily buy signal, you're selling based upon a candlestick daily sell signal. Left-right combo is a doji. I'm trying to see if there's one on this chart. A doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, the doji being that little left uh, jab, the uh, the the bullish engulfing being the big roundhouse right, uh, telling you exactly what the what they decided after that doji. Okay. Do you need both stochastic lines to be oversold to consider the stock to be oversold? Not really. All the stochastics are is telling you where you are in a trend. Obviously, a, co a candlestick buy signal doesn't mean that much if you're in an overbought condition. Candlestick sell signal doesn't mean that much if you're in oversold condition. So 
The stochastics are really just to tell you where you are in a trend. If you're in an overbought condition, you're more apt to start watching, obviously, for sell signals. If you're in an oversold condition, you start looking for buy signals. Okay. All right, then just to make sure, if anybody wants to try the room for a week, I hope everybody realizes that I try to make our modus operandi that everybody gets more than their money's worth when they're kind of doing stuff on the candlestick forum. Okay, with that, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. All right, and in 4.8 seconds, go ahead and do the other double line. All right, let's see if I can scroll back up faster than... Oops, nope, can't do it. All right, we'll get as many as we can done. C-E-N-X, still in a downtrend, obviously. And notice that uh, once they took it up, they had a kicker signal, but it failed. They closed it back down below the open of the kicker signal. And we're right on the uh, 50. Now, we're in the oversold area, so you watch this diligently. If this opens lower, you stay short. If it opens positive, then there's a good prospect they're going to be uh, supporting on the uh, T line. I'm sorry, on the 50. Uh, I would use. I wouldn't want to see it trade up above if I was short above today's open, because that would take you up above the T line and telling you they were bouncing off the 50. Let's see. We did our. Let's see our DNT. Nice little bullish uh, left. That's a left-right combo right there. Notice the doji followed by a bullish engulfing, and where did it do it? Right on the 50-day uh, moving average. If it opens positive, what's that telling us? It's telling us it's, they're confirming the signal, and they're not resisting at the uh, T line, and hopefully they're going to be breaking that downward trend channel. Uh, we will do a more concise, concentrated uh, day trade setup uh, session here. Um, for those of you not familiar with the Candlestick Forum or what we do here, been kind of lax here for a few days or a few weeks because of this darn kidney stone. And I know this is probably too much information, but I have to check out the restroom about every 20 minutes. So uh, getting into the cold weather, we will start doing uh, probably sessions almost every night. And that, those sessions will be on how to enter and exit at the appropriate times, um, how to do the scans for the best trades the next day, how to set your stop losses using candlestick signals, uh, how to do uh, option trades such as your spreads, why spreads are more effective at times, how to do staggered spreads, which are highly effective. So there's, well, there's tons of topics, and it's all based on being able to see what type of pattern or what type of signals occurring and whether it's time to be buying or selling. J.C. Penny, on a short term, you shouldn't be in it. On a longer term basis, if it, we'll be, we're owning this longer term and we'll be buying new positions as soon as it comes back up through the, uh, the T line. But if you're long, holding long term, just hang on to it. Go, go. Go, go, not quite a bullish engulfing, which means you've got to be a little bit more careful. Right now, it came up to the 50. You're not quite in the oversold area, so I'm not putting my whole weight down just yet uh, as far as going long. There still might be a day or two where they're still selling, selling off. What is the target on CZR that we recommended today, and the candle was the breakout of a fry pan and bottom? That was, let's see. And what candle was the breakout of the fry pan bottom on GPRO? Okay. Let's see. Let's go to the first one. CZR. CZR, you stay short, especially if this opens lower tomorrow. As you can see, this is in a downtrend, and it failed at the 50. That means it's 
and still stay short until you see a buy signal. G Pro, G Pro, notice where the fry pan bottom broke out, right where it began, with a little gap up through that level. You can see you had a fry pan bottom, and notice how it was indecisive trading this whole time. Then that was a very decisive candle that up here. Now the difference between a pattern and a a uh, signal is a signal is usually going to be most effective when stochastics are here. A breakout of a pattern is usually going to occur when it's already up in the overbought condition. Okay, let's see. Whoops, I goofed up here. I've gone the wrong way. I don't pay attention to volume. Volume and price have nothing to do with each other. If you're in a stock situation where um, I just happened to be scrolling the wrong way and read that, um, if you're in a stock where nobody wants to sell it to you, people are going to pay up for it. It might move up on strong or lower volume. Now, if you happen to see huge volume at a reversal area, that means there's been a lot of exchange of stock, and it's at the low end, it's usually the uh, panic sellers selling into the smart money. And at the top, it's usually the enthusiastic buying from the uh, uh, or the profit taking of the smart money. Uh, SKX, if it confirms, uh, if you're short, you stay short. Uh, if it opens positive, probably going to bounce up to the at least up to the uh, T line. Uh, if it opens negative, you stay short. If it opens positive. And then it looks like it's going to get weak. You reshort if it comes back down through the day's open. There's a nice fry pan bottom on AEGR. We're just about the same level as when things started getting very indecisive. You can buy this on positive trading. The next pop should be up to the 200-day moving average. Now, that's also probably going to be a function of how strong or weak the market is over the next couple of days. CMRX. Another one that's just about at the breakout level. As long as they can't close us now above the or below the T line, you can stay long on this one. Uh, the Russell 2000 also did a doji, whoops, more of a uh, piercing signal, but it's not a piercing signal. Remember, a piercing signal has to open below the previous day's low and close more than halfway up. This is just an update right now and a down uh, downtrend. SSH. Uh, this one you don't do anything with. You can't. Uh, you can short it if it goes below the uh, 50. But as you can see, it's still stuck. Now I would buy this if we saw a buy signal and a close back up above the T line. MCP. That's a good little uh, chart. To just make sure your volume is big enough to get into this. Um, let's make this more pronounced. Positive trading would break this downtrending channel, figuring that your next target is up here at the 50-day uh, uh, moving average. Facebook, Facebook right now, I wouldn't be long or short. I would short it if it came back down through today's low. I'd go long if it closed back up above the T-line. But as you can see, there's really no major direction right now in Facebook. It's a very slow uptrend, but that's the best you can say about it. It's a very slow uptrend. DDD, you want to be going short if this opens weaker tomorrow, doing kind of your uh, uh, dumpling top. ETN, another one that if it opens lower tomorrow, you want to be going short. Uh, if it opens positive, expect it. You don't do anything with it until it can get up through the T line. Caterpillar, another one that if it opens lower, you want to be stay short. ROX. Uh, Caterpillar, if it opens positive, you cover your short position and see what it does at the T-line. ROX, all you can do with this one is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line, provided it's got a good enough volume to get in and out of. And ACAD, another one that looks like it's trying to support on the uh, 50, but you don't do anything with this until it can close above this downtrending channel and the T-line. Um, Micron. 
all you can do with this one is stay long as long as it stays above the T line right now. It wouldn't be a, an enthusiastic buyer, but it wouldn't be selling it either. EXPE, this one, uh, yeah, this one's kind of got that evening star signal. If this one opens lower, you can be shorting it with a prospect that is coming back down to test the uh, 200. First resistance level or support level would be down here at the bottom of this little channel. Slumberger, nothing yet. Uh, you're not even in the oversold area. If this one opens lower, you've got a good prospect of having a uh, bearish doji sandwich, which means you want to stay short. TRN looks like it's heading for the uh, 50, I'm sorry, the 200. ZMH, morning star signal with a booster. Anytime you see that big reversal, you've got a morning star signal with this big booster move to it. That tells you there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. You can be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. RHT, Red Hat, notice the trend kicker. Notice how this opened here and closed here. Today it opened here and went this way eventually. That's a very strong move. That tells you you're going up to at least the 50. And Valero, stay short until you see a buy signal and a close above the T-line. Rata, Rata was just kind of waffling today right on the T-line. This one has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower tomorrow, close out the position. that's lost its fizzle. Oops, scroll past me again here. NDX. Uh-oh. S dot N D X. So nothing there that I'd get excited about. If you're short, you stay short. Uh, if I was short, I wouldn't want to see it trade back up above today's high. That would tell me they're bouncing it back up to the uh, T line. Uh, Loco. Front row. Loco, I wouldn't be long or short. That's sideways. There's a big wedge in. In process, I wouldn't be long or short until it breaks out one way or the other. Uh, this one you can be buying if it opens positive. Just use the T-line as your stop. And LCI, LCI has to open positive uh, to stay in it on the long side. If it opens lower, close it out because that's telling you they'll move in that direction. AKS has been getting battered here for quite a while. Uh, did a bullish harami. If it opens positive tomorrow, if you're short, you cover it because that means they're bouncing it up to the T line. If they open it lower, obviously you just stay short until you see a buy signal confirmed. Amazon. Nothing here yet. It did come back up into a hammer. You stay short until you see a buy signal and a close above the T line. TNA, bullish harami, same scenario. If it opens positive, you cover your short positions, uh, but we definitely need to see it open positive. That means the whole market, the market needs to open positive tomorrow, but even if it does, you've got a good prospect that it's going to uh, just bounce up to the uh, next uh, resistance levels. Uh-oh. Let me try another one. We sometimes get little glitches with this system. Okay, GDX, inverted hammer, doji. This one you can be buying if it comes back up through the T-line. If you're short, you stay short until you see it get up through the T-line. And EWC, big hammer signal down here. If this opens positive, you can be buying on the basis that it's probably going to at least pop back up uh, to the uh, 
to the T line and then see what it does from that point. Anytime you see a signal is occurring right near the 200 day moving average, you start watching for a reversal. NC or NSC probably wouldn't be long or short this one. It's still kind of moving sideways. Um, need to see something strong breaking it out of this trend. All right, David. AAP, that's a good looking chart. This one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Any bottom for GDX way below all moving averages? Let's see. Nothing yet until it can get back up above the T line. SMCI. Oh, that's a toughie right now. Probably wouldn't do too much with this right now because there's really no direction to it. I think I'd be trading someplace else. And I notice how when it's pulling back, it's pulling back very indecisively after the best friend signal. I would put a buy stop at today's high. If it comes up through there, that tells you they're taking it right back up again. And USG, and the reason for that on this one is because when they're pulling it back, and they're doing it with dojis, that means they aren't selling with any great conviction. USG still on a downtrend until you see a, a confirmed buy signal. ATHM, uh, this one you can get ready to buy. It doesn't really have any strong signal to it. Uh, I would probably want to have see this one get through the 50 and the 20 before putting any any money into it, just because there wasn't really any reversal signal. ADHD, big bullish engulfing signal. Uh, you can buy this one on positive trading. You just have to see what it does once it gets to the uh, the T line. And here's another one that you get ready to go short on this slow curve, especially if it opens lower. Obviously, your first target is the 50, and then see what it does from there. Lulu, Lulu did a nice bullish engulfing signal with a booster. This one you can buy on positive trading tomorrow. Just use the T-line as your stop. And Apple, still in this wedge. I wouldn't be long or short Apple until it breaks out one way or the other. HIMX, stay long. This is kind of the bobble. Came up, failed at the 200, hit the T-line. Now, if it comes back up through the uh, 200, you can still be buying it. IBM, still in a downtrend until you see a reversal signal. More than likely, if they don't hold the uh, 200, they're going to come back and test this level right here. Netflix. Netflix, I also wouldn't be long or short until you see this is not... Quite a bullish engulfing signal today. Didn't this to me? Uh, yeah, you're moving sideways. I wouldn't be trading this one at all. We did Slumburger, uh, AMT. Get ready. Uh, this one's moving sideways with Dojis. You can be ready to buy this if it comes back up through the T line. Oh, Annette, if you're having trouble with a link. Uh, Email abraham at candlestickforum.com. So we voted you off the island. <laughs> uh, ARIA, you buy in positive trading. Uh, let's see, I don't know what that symbol is, William. AVNR. Right now we're out of this one because it's moving in a wedge. We'll buy it back when it breaks one way out of this one way or the other out of this wedge. And uh, Skyworks, get ready to short this one if it opens lower tomorrow. Notice your stochastics aren't anywhere near the oversold area yet. So with the breakdown, if it does a doji sandwich to the downside, it's breaking all resistance levels or support levels. 200-day moving average becomes your next target. Ford, Ford. We're holding this long term still, and we're getting ready to buy this long term again 
if it starts opening positive or it starts doing some buy signals, especially coming back up through the T line. G E B I M. That's a any the bigger the signal, the more uh, compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment. So you've got a doji, hammer, bullish engulfing, left right combo. Buy this, expecting a 45 degree to come off of here. Camp. Camp, uh, another one that could be bottoming. If it opens positive tomorrow, if you're short, you cover it. You don't buy it until it does close up above the T line. A N R. Not, nothing here. Two dollar stock, you can't short it. Uh, you don't want to buy it until it says a buy signal. And GTAT, bullish engulfing right on the uh, T line. If this one opens positive, you can be buying it. There's a gap up the uh, moving averages. We did G Pro TLT. Uh, this one, if it opens lower tomorrow, they're coming back to test the T line. That's a bearish harami in the overbought condition. Uh, Mobley, stay long as long as it stays above the T line. INVN had a nice chart today. There's Doji Doji gap up. This one could pop back up to the 200-day uh, uh, move or the 50-day moving average. Um, Stony, that's right. Yes. And Sears Holding did a little bullish engulfing, not bullish, but a doji uh, bullish confirmation. You can buy this on positive trading using the T-line as your stop. NSC, that's sideways. I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. There's just no direction to it. All right. Let's see. I think... Few more AEM does that's kind of a bullish uh, uh, flutter kicker. This one you can buy on positive trading. Expect the uh, next target to be the 200-day moving average. Uh, American Express stay short until you see a buy signal. Adobe uh, this one I wouldn't be long or short. Uh, Unless I'd be short if it came back down through today's low. Um, all right, let's see. Looks like we've done most of these. STZ. Ooh, I don't know. I, that one is going to move in the direction of how they open it tomorrow. Um, and it doesn't really have any direction. I wouldn't be long or short that stock. UTX, this one you get ready to short if it opens weaker tomorrow. Bearish uh, doji sandwich, which would be breaking it down through the uh, support level. There's your dumpling top, and it failed at the 50. Did that not come up, Swifty? Apparently not. Uh, one is uh, in the stochastics, the blue line is the fast, the red line is the slow. Some people trade stochastics, and that's when the stochastics cross, you can buy or sell. Could you please explain what positive trading is or opening strong means? Uh, obviously, just if the, number one, if the market is opening positive and your stock is opening positive. That's usually a good sign. The market and the stock's going in the right direction. There's uh, we go when we do our enter entry and exit strategies. Our entry strategies are based upon four quadrants: how the market is opening and how the stock is opening. Um, so obviously, the strongest one is if the market's opening strong, meaning positive, and the stock's opening positive, you can be buying immediately. 
going to purchase and study the videos. All right. Um, BRFS needs to get above the T line. You don't really have anything great here that would uh, show you there's any big reversal going on, just some bottoming action. Uh, right now, yes, Rata could go either way. So if it opens lower, you close out the position. Did we do NSC? Yeah, sideways. That wouldn't be in that one. Uh, there's just too many charts right now. And again, this is the benefit of the scans, is you can find probably 5, 6, 10, 12 good bullish situations each day or 10, 12 good bearish situations each day. You'll never have a lack of uh, uh, trades to go after because there's, again, you're always going to find a few good ones and a few short ones out of 7,800 uh, trading entities, and it just takes a matter of minutes each day. JetBlue, nothing here yet unless they can get it up through the T-line. Whoops. HCA, this one looks like it's doing a hammer harami right on the uh, 50. If this opens positive, you definitely cover your short position. If it opens lower, go short. We did Mobley, uh, Vips. Vips, I don't know what this line is. Vips is in this downtrending channel, but it looks like it's uh, hit the downtrending channel, so it's just a function of if it opens positive. I wouldn't be trading Vips because if it, even if it opens positive, it has to get through the T-line, the 20, and the 50 just to break this downtrending channel. Let's see, is that P L L P L L still in a slow drift to the downside. Uh, we did Netflix. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm running out of steam here, so uh, I'm going to call it a night. Um, anyways, uh, the market, the markets, tomorrow's trading will be a direct function of how they open this market in the morning. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We'll hopefully see you in the chat rooms. Again, anybody that got a cancellation notice and still can't get in, just email Abraham and uh, he'll get you in right away. We'll see you in the morning.